You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Hello Sport Podcast. I'm on Qualified Opinion and Unwavering Bias. Back, I believe, the date today, Monday the 28th of June, 2021, in the year of our Lord, St. Peter Volandis. Uh, obviously, huge State of Origin game two, which we're going to get to. Um, don't know if there's actually anything else in the sporting world that even rates a mention. There might be some things, but not much. Um, but as always, before we sort of get into the sporting week that was, i like to introduce to you all the co-host of the show, the one and the only Edward Lloyd Simpson. Hello, mate. It's a pleasure to be here. Fucking hell of a morning. Woke up pumped up. Yeah. I was up at, I was up fucking early. I was up at five to drive back from Kangaroo Valley. We stayed another night. Did you drive back today? Yeah. yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay another night. I'm having the fucking most relaxing time of all time. I'm just going to unwind completely. Yeah. I'm going to get up and go the big lift. I, I checked how long it took. Hour and 50. I'm like, okay, is that going to be an hour and 50 on a Monday morning? Bang. Of course it will. COVID. No one on the road, baby. I can commit to that. And once I had a bit of, once I knew what I was in for, yeah. I was fine. I woke up fucking pumped up. Ready I, was to a, rip. I was a little bit hungover. Maybe a couple of Negronis last night, a few blokes. But- generally a few margaritas but generally speaking um was buoyed by the performance from our boys in blue last yeah, night our which state. Get to. um but thought i'd just you know inform the punter and the dribbler on my weekend well because we are it. in lockdown again right we so are. covid's thrown everyone through a fucking loop that's right it's COVID no has. one more than you and your plans yeah, yeah yeah look i was supposed to go down to tassie to just having a drink of my coffee um to look at a wedding venue, which is booked in. I'm not going to tell the punter and the dribbler where it is. Because well, because then it'll just be swamped by Pat. It'll be swamped. It'll be swamped. It'll be ruined. Yeah. It's in Tasmania. And we were going down to check it out. I hadn't seen it yet. Ella had. We're going to hang out there, you know, go to Hobart, cruise around up to Fresh, you know, have a great time. All this COVID stuff starts kicking off. Ella's like, can we get an earlier flight? That was the earliest one we could get. 11 a.m. I'm like, should be sweet. Like, nothing announced yet. Should be fine. This was Wednesday, Thursday? Wednesday. 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 Get to the airport, check in, not a problem, through security. Everything's looking hunky, fucking dory. Get up to the gate. I'm ready to rock. Buy a magazine. We're on the plane. I'm on the plane now. I'm on the plane. What magazine did you buy? Cosmos. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's Cosmos. Cosmos. Yeah. Yep. Respect. Yep, liked it. it was, I thought it was you were saying Cosmo. I was like, mm, okay, that was that was <laughs> cosmopolitan. Yeah, <laughs> no, Cosmos. Um, sat down, fucking rough and through it, having a fucking ball, and then I'd sort of like overheard them calling. They were like, ask this girl to come up to the front, but I didn't really pay attention. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I get you. Anyway, so we're sitting there, and then the captain comes over like 20 minutes later. He's like, yep, we're just, so we're just waiting for the paperwork. And Ella's like, ooh, that's not a good sign. I'm like, no, 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 it's just paperwork. No. I've been around paperwork issues <laughs> yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was once in fucking flying from New York back to Sydney. Paperwork issues kept us on the fucking, in the terminal from 3 p.m. till 3 a.m. So I know paperwork Holy issues. shit. So paperwork can be I, I know about lent it. upon yeah, yeah. for this <laughs> yeah, sort yeah, of a yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can land on paperwork. You can land on paperwork. And it's been lent on before. <laughs> so I've lived and breathed paperwork. Yeah. And I was like, it'll be fine. Um, and then another half an hour goes by and he comes back in. Oh, actually, um, someone that was on the plane who's since been removed and taken for a test was like a potential COVID fucking... Was everyone like, ah, so not not paper, not paperwork. You made us sit in this little mm. fucking COVID jail cell. Well, well, it's a ploy. It's a ploy. Oh, it'll be fine. Um, you know, as soon as she's tested, we'll, we'll fucking take off. We'll be on our merry way. Were you not alarmed that there was someone on the fucking plane that might have had COVID? Well, I was like, hang on. How the fuck has this happened? Has she told someone when she hopped on the plane? Oh, hey, by the way, like, I know you're closing the door, but I might have COVID. <laughs> Like, I don't think that happened. Yeah, how the fuck So that then I'm like, it's like the contact tracers fucking talk to someone and then they've been like, I think she's getting a flight today and like they've pieced it together that way. I don't know. You, don't even, you haven't had an answer for this? We haven't had an answer. We're not, we're not told. Not told. Anyway, so we're sitting on the fucking plane. An hour goes by. Two go by. 
After two hours, they're like, okay, so we're just going to get you off the plane now because it's a little bit more comfortable. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just a fucking disaster. It's happening. Get off. And they've literally shut the whole Jetstar like end of the terminal down. We get off and a bloke's got this massive assault rifle. Like That seems like overkill to it me. It was 100% overkill, but I think it was their way of saying, don't fuck around here. Who's fucking around i don't know what's this like i remember you'd go to other countries and you'd see an assault rifle and you're like wow shit's a bit real in this country mm. it seems like now yeah, they've yeah, just yeah, yeah. slipped the assault rifle into everyday know, fucking the assault police rifle. repertoire you're like what the fuck are we doing with an assault rifle couldn't agree more the assault rifle has been a COVID addition i think yeah they're what, like oh COVID's around let's start fucking dropping the the assault rifle in the ar yeah Tom. uh like i'm pretty sure that we were just good with your run-of-the-mill glock handgun or Bruh, whatever the fuck also it is. Even, you could you can put a taser on the front of your fucking chest i'm not running mate I don't want to get <laughs> exactly fuck i don't want to get shot with volts of electricity mate uh, you don't like, need a machine gun when did pepper spray stop being enough we're in a country where you can bring down a fucking mountain lion. Yeah, mate. exactly. You know what I mean? It's used for bears, like <laughs> bear mace and shit. Like, why would you think you need an assault rifle for me? Mate, you don't need an assault rifle. I for fucking, anyone. my back goes, like, I've got no core. What do you think I'm going to do? Wrestle down a police officer and fucking steal your gun? No, what? Not, not without my vision. Or are you trying to shoot? You can't shoot COVID. You can't tell me this is directly related to an, uh, a, 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 an airborne disease. No. No, it's ridiculous. It's the world's gone mad, Tom. Get off there, <laughs> and the whole fucking terminal has shut down. Poor bloke who's in there sell, selling his, you know, banana bread and his brownies and his muffins and shit. He's been told to fuck off. Well, so that's yeah, mate, closed you can't down. be selling fucking banana. The bread. whole thing is closed, right? And so we sort of just meander around, and people take their seats, sort of quite spread out because it's a large area. An hour goes by, I'm like, can we get some food? He's like, mate, vending machine just there. I'm like, okay, great. Well, it's like fucking 4.30, 5 o'clock now. I haven't yeah. eaten since 10 o'clock, Please. but I'll get another bag of twisties, sure. <laughs> After three hours in the terminal, so now we're, it's five hours or five and a half hours total, they come over the speaker, they're like, all right, great news, she's tested negative. We're like, perfect. But Tasmania now closed the borders to people that have visited in the last 14 days, Wallara, Bondi, blah, 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 like, which I'm like, well, for fucks. Yeah, everywhere so. you've been. Then we start talking, me and Ella like, ooh, do we roll the dice here? Do we, uh, do we roll the dice? The do we shoot for the stars? Do we, do we go the big lift? Do we, do we take a punt? Uh, I was, originally I was in camp, yes, camp punt. Yeah. Uh, Ella too. Ella was on board. So you were for both camp, camp punt. punt. We were both camp punt. We we're, we're gonna punt. But then Ella started to get me more anxious about it. Talked to her old man. Her old man's like, "Ooh, that's a pretty big punt." But then her mum was pro punt. Her dad wasn't. And right. then then doubt comes in. And yeah. when doubt creeps into a situation like between that, between the two, like if you're both rock solid on yeah. the idea, yeah. as, as soon as like someone gets in between that, uh, the yeah, little yeah. sliver of oh, doubt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The glue starts to come. The foundation yeah. starts to shake. Oh yeah, it's it's shaken, and now the building's at risk. Yeah. We went up to the counter and she's like, oh, they're pretty hectic down in Tassie. Like they, you know, they've been known to go through bank statements and shit. I'm like, bank statements? Ooh, that'll do me in. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start thinking about doing fucking two weeks quarantine in a Tasmanian fucking airport motel. And I thought, <laughs> nah, nah, we're going to have to, we're going to have to fucking parachute out of this bitch. So we got our bags off and Dude, fucked the off. The idea of you being fucking <laughs> in, a car, in a fucking Tasmanian airport motel for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> With Elsa, she would have been a nightmare. Fucking hilarious. Oh, dude. dude. Would you would have lost Zoom. the plot. Yeah. yeah they probably don't would. even show Origin down in Tassie either. It would have been a fucking nightmare. You got to work for it in Tassie to find Origin. I was yeah. down there for one a couple of years ago. So, so you about got out of there, got, got the home at... I was, look, I was, I was seated on the plane reading Cosmos at 11.30 and I got home at like 7.30. So, you know, it was a fucking great day. Great day. One of the great days. One of the time. great days. Airports, dude. Yeah. So after that, we fucked off to Kangaroo Valley for three nights, which is lovely. That's nice. Up in the hills. Yeah. Just thought, let's get away. Yep. Recharge the batteries. Recharge. Big recharge. Great weekend. That's my story, Tonka. Took Tonka. Oh, Tonka, bro. Fucking hell. He loved it. Of course he fucking Like, did. as soon as he sees a bit of space, he just goes mad. Like, he just, he didn't stop running the whole time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's what a dog does when they get a little Warm bit of the that. heart. Warm the heart right up. It's fucked though now, dude. This lockdown's uh, obviously, you know, we're an essential service, so we keep going. But um, we have to. We dribble have to and keep yarn. going. Dribble and yarn. If dribble and yarn isn't essential now, 
Like, then when is it? Well, listen, when it, people when need it, us now more than ever. Exactly. When it hit last year, no sport at all. Mm. We were like, well, we'll keep going. Yeah, we did. Oh, you think we can't talk without sport? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think, think the again. last 15 minutes have been? <laughs> think again. <laughs> think again. I'll go four hours. Yeah. Not a problem. That won't bring up sport once. No, that was pretty much, to be honest, we did full dribbler, separate dribbler, dribbler hour podcast, which was just responding to the. Mate, we had so much dribble and yarn on the go. We did one podcast completely of dribble and of yarn. Yeah. And then another one where dribblers yarned. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And the dribblers needed an outlet. They were like, I need to yarn and I need to yarn now. Oh, fuck. We, exactly. They needed, they did, there was a lot of uh, bent up energy out there, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, pent up. Pent up. Not bent up. But That's it was I'm close. Mean. One letter off. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's funny though now like with the lockdown where it's like, okay, so you can only leave your house for exercise. I, it was the motivation I needed. I had an exercise for four months. Mm. Shin splints. We know the yarn. We know the story. Mm. Uh, but Saturday morning was like, fuck it. Me and Steph went to Centennial Park. It may as well have been a Saturday in summer and COVID had never existed. There were millions of people there. Everyone wanting to run and walk. And just, it's like, that's the thing where I'm kind of like trying to work out with this Delta variant, which sounds sexy. Do you not think Delta variant sounds sexier in terms of these variants? I think in terms of COVID variants, Delta are a very sexy term. I want to know where it's come from. Is it off the back of like Delta, the airline in the US? Oh, like naming, naming, who's got naming rights to this one? Well, I'm, I'm just thinking has Delta paid a sum of monies? Dude, imagine that corporation starting to sponsor the next strain. We should try and sponsor the next one. Dribbler variant. Dribbler variant, yeah. Have you got an answer to your? I'm getting there. Well, I think it's it's Greek alphabet or phonetic alphabet, right? Because uh, there's the alpha strain. Okay. And then this one. But there was Delta an Indian strain. strain. So they're just moving No, the them. Delta strain is the Indian strain. I think they don't really want to be calling. You know it how like they do stuff like oh, You know, like, right. hu- like hurricanes and tornadoes, they just keep going down the list. And just coming up with a name. Yeah. yeah. But based on the letter. So yeah, Delta is yeah, yeah. like the fourth strain of the disease. Ah, well, I mean, they could have called it the dribbler strain. I feel yeah. like that makes more sense. And it also, I don't get why. Well, the re- dribbler variant. Prepared to rework it, Tom. I think dribbler variant mm. makes more sense. But there's an alpha variant. But the alpha Which would have vari- been first. But yeah, but the alpha variant isn't as strong as the delta variant. Well, no, they change. Stronger. Yeah. It's got stronger. Yeah, but when you think alpha, you think like, oh, this is the top dog. Yeah, but that yeah, would have been so first. That's just yeah, one. I get that. One, but. two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fourth stronger than the first. But yeah. so is this, is it much more, is it much stronger? I thought it was just much more contagious. No, no, much more contagious. Yeah. So not Which not, is a strength of sorts. Yes, but in terms of like what it does, I feel like, like it's, it's like no, a sort of its superpower. Yeah, it's, it's like highly contagious. Preliminary yeah. evidence suggests that people infected with Delta are about twice as likely to end up in hospital compared with the Alpha. Oh, Edge. Well, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, interesting. That's, that's exciting. So, a few people getting vaccines and shit. I haven't. Uh, I've booked mine. That's exciting. did you? Yeah, yeah, a bunch are of boys. Are we allowed to get? Yeah, dude, one, a bunch of boys fucking got it yesterday. Are we allowed to get it now? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's food for thought. Exactly, yeah, I'll do it. I mean, I just want to think, make sure your parents get it first or I'm just like, hey, Dad, Mum, you got your fucking vaccines? Yeah. Who knows? Hi, um, Rich. Hi, Rich. Anyway, lockdown, which is fun, but I actually am not that concerned because it's, I feel like life for me as a parent is kind of the same. I can't really go out that much anyway and I can still do the podcast and the show, so. Yeah, sure. Sure, you know what I mean? Look, it, What about it, for Dave? You're locked down with your parents. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, fun. Are you excited for that? Are you planning um, so like an escape? Especially because I started. Did you pass the billy around or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we, exactly. We all take turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit around the fucking kitchen table. I've got to shout them weed though and they don't pay me back. So well, what if we just swing them some cookies though? Surely they'll be cool with that. Yeah, that'd be not bad. But I, I started my uni holidays like halfway through last week. So this oh, is just fuck, perfect. School holidays start today as well, yeah, I think. That's yeah, that's the, the fucking worst. It's fucked everyone. Bruh. Sucked dude. into parents. Dude, seriously. Well, I'm a parent, Dave, so well, fuck you. like, but not... Not really. Yeah. Well, I am. Really I know what you mean. But yes. parents with no, kids at school. 100%. Yes. It is. It would be a fucking nightmare. That's also the thing. Like, with Evie, you're just doing the same shit you do anyway, right? You play around, fucking blow bubbles. She is obsessed with bubbles, by the way. Like, you couldn't... You want to see a child's eyes light up? You want to know... You know, like, core of the earth's hottest place on earth, right? Fucking North Pole. I don't know where. It's, like, the coldest place on earth. When Evie's playing Probably with bubbles, bowl, but yeah. when Evie's playing with bubbles, that's the cutest place on earth. 
just so you know. She's obsessed with bubbles. So if you got bubbles, your fucking lockdown's fine. But so for us, it's kind of just like the same shit, except that I don't know she can go to daycare. But I think like she can still be looked after by her like grandmas and stuff because it's like care. Yeah. Mm. I think it's kind of play on. I think so. Look, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? But I think good luck to everyone out there. Enjoy yourself in this lockdown. Be safe. Be well. Wear masks. If you are finding the hours hard to fill, I would suggest going back through the back catalogue. Yeah. Okay. There's plenty of dribbling yarn there. Plenty of dribbling Plenty. Yarn. How lucky would you feel? Like I'm sometimes jealous of the punter and the dribbler who just happens across us now and they're mm. like, holy shit. Mm. There's like fucking 200 episodes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, it's about, well, because there's 70. How many would there be? Be 150, 180? Well, no. So there's 200. We're like 270 something now. We'd be at 200. Yeah. We'd have 200. Available episodes yeah. of Dribbling of Yarn. Of Dribbling of yarn, dribble yarn. Yeah, that's almost a year if you listen to one a day. That'll get you through fucking lockdown. Remember those blokes are like inboxes are like, mate, I just fucking found your podcast two weeks ago and I've gone through the whole back catalogue. We were like, like holy where are the other 70? I'm like, have you slept, bro? <laughs> what the what hell? The fuck? But that is good to know. Dribbling Yarn, uh, the YouTube page, you know, you've got about even there as well if you want to fucking just dig in and rip some responsible famous bets. But who really cares? What I will say, actually, Eddie, we completely forgot about this off the top, but that's the way things go. The response to the Bounce Out Tracky sale has been fantastic. Thanks to all of you motherfuckers that have uh, gone and got them. So currently, Bounce Out Tracky's pre-sale and the uh, Punters and Dribbles Hats pre-sale still going. Um, there's Dribbler Packs, which sold out in about a day. There was, only, there was, there was you know, a certain, a finite amount of those, but that was where you got the trackies, the hat, and some stubby, uh, stubby coolers. The sale, pre-sale goes till Friday. So you've got a few more days. For the trackies. For the trackies. The hats will still be up there, but for the trackies, you've got till Friday. Uh, so you don't want to miss out on those motherfuckers. No, you don't. Because they ain't coming back. No. Until next year. <laughs> um, they might come back. But they won't be coming for 12 months. No. And we're not fucking around on that. We've been serious. Yep. We've been 100% serious. 100% serious. You've got to order in certain volumes and we can't really... We're like, if, after this, we can't go back for more. We can't Fuck go back that. and go, can we get three more for this bloke from fucking Broken Hill? No. No. That's no. not how it works. That's not how it works. you got to buy like 100,000 at one time. Yeah. So if you fuckers miss out... You're going to be... There's only 100,000 available, just so you know. I'm just saying they've already been. There's hundred thousand orders so far. We hope to get another. We hope 000. to get another hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, but three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand by Friday. By Friday, and then that's it. Yeah, line through it. You're done. No more. No more. Uh, should we talk to Margin? Let's do it, dude. My mother-in-law love her to death. Well, this isn't even a negative thing about her. She has so little fucking respect for me as a man. It's not funny. <laughs> Which is, like, reasonable. She, I think I said it on here one time, like, at the end of last year when we were moving out of Bondi and I was having to fix a curtain in the house. That it? And I, like, yeah. fucking trying to drill it and then she comes home and pulls the cord once and the whole thing falls down. And she's like, Stephanie, get handy, man. He can't do this. And I'm like, she's Croatian. That's why I did the accent. And then I also realised as I was trying to screw in the fucking curtain that i had the drill on reverse instead of going in so like the screws weren't going in i'm like what the fuck and then um should a youtube tutorial dude it's just a fucking idiot right and then she came over the other day she looks after evie on friday mornings and she comes over and she's like um our front door squeaks like nothing crazy but like it creaks she comes over with wd-40 and steph's like laughing at me because her mum's got wd-40 for our door and i'm like oh cool and then Steph comes out and goes, now, um, or even Marina might have, and just gone, like, here's the WD 40, just fucking spray it on the thing. I was, and I'm like, yeah, cool, don't worry. Don't worry, I got it. And then I, um, <laughs> and then as I'm, uh, as I'm doing it, she walks out and goes, ooh, handyman. <laughs> and then walks out of the room. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> In my own home, but it was like so true. I'm just like, ooh. And it works, dude. WD 40 is legit. Yeah, it is legit. But yeah, I got put on the bitch mad by uh, 
That's fucking funny. The mother-in-law. And she was holding Evie as well. So it was like, I'm getting shamed in front of Evie. But it was fucking funny. <laughs> anyway. It had to masculating. Emasculating. Unfortunately, you got that wrong and you sounded dumb. But that's all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but up since five. Yeah, you've been up since five. I mean, that's kind of the time I get up every day. So, Do you? Well, now the cat starts waking me up. The cat... You've rebonded, haven't you? Yeah, we have. But when he wants to get out, it's like he's happy to sleep in the bed, which is cool. I'm cool with that. It's nice. The whole family's in the bed. Well, Evie, when she's in. But then when he wants to get, he wants to go outside in the morning for a piss or a poo, he just knows that I'm the only one that's going to get up and do it. So he just, he sits like right near me and he gets right into my ear and purrs real loud and then just delicately claws the bits of skin that I haven't got like a T-shirt or like fucking clothes on it. And he just like, just claws the skin and like, headbutts you until you wake up and i'm like okay dude like i try and push him away but like he knows this is how this motherfucker is going to get me up and get me outside so he starts trying to get outside at like 4 30 mm. 5 o'clock so i'm always up that's not the point though i tell you what is the point eddie new south wales where the blues queensland you're gonna lose but da 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 but da 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 but da 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 now Famous victories. Mate. That's the that's like the that's the most dominant New South Wales performance, I think, one, two in Queensland that's ever happened. I was like, you know, you get a bit nervous before the game and you're always a little unsure of, you know, what's gonna happen and it's up at Suncorp and the history and all that shit. And I was just like, I went back and I looked at that back back line photo of all the fucking throbbers and yeah. I was like, Who the fuck is gonna handle these thoroughbreds? No. Who? One. No one. Who is going to handle them? I tell you who's not, and this is not a shot at Kurt Capewell, but Kurt Capewell is not going to handle them. Kurt Capewell isn't going to do it. Cole Felt's not. Cole Felt's not doing it. Valentine Holmes isn't. Gagai's not. Gagai was the only one that really tried in the fucking Queensland back line. Like, like he, he had a crack. He had a crack. But he's not up to it. No one's up to it, Their dude. right side defence got fucking pounded into the earth by one of the great thoroughbreds all the time, Latrell Mitchell, yes. who had a fucking ball terror of a match. Absolute ball terror. Teddy Tedesco going like, oh, y'all must have forgot. I'm still a fucking weapon. Mm. I'm still an absolute weapon. Man of the match performance. Yeah. But, like, everyone was good. But when you talk about, like, the New South Wales team, you go... Jerome Luai was like a, an unknown coming into this. Is he, you know, how does he go in, you know, not with his, uh, in Penrith colours or like, can he handle the step up? Like he's been fucking fantastic. Unbelievable. He's been Making unbelievable. breaks, doing this and that. Like he just doesn't, he, 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 he doesn't give a fuck. Like no. he just goes out there and rips. Like and he's rips. not overawed by the situation at all. No. He just, he just pounds away. Like he Toto was under pressure. Like Toto was getting, they, they finally decided to kick some fucking highballs at him. Had Wasn't a couple enough. of hairy moments, but like handled couple, it. Handled couple. it. We defended our dicks off. God save us. The defense was unbelievable. Like everyone showed up last night. No one really had a bad game. Queensland started well. I was, was like, okay, it, yeah. here we go. We're in for it here. It was a good start. Great start. But then after 10 minutes, you just hear, you know, the astute color guys like Billy Slater and Joey. fucking Joey and shit being like, Ooh, like the Queensland bigs are starting to... Bl they're walking. Yeah. After 10 minutes, I'm like, oh, that ain't good. They aren't up to the rigours of origin football. And then it starts to open up a little bit and then we start to assert ourselves. And then there was a couple of like half chances and shit. I'm like, the oh, only this chances, isn't looking good for them. The only chances that, that came through were for New South Wales. Like the half chances that didn't end up yep. eventuating, but it was only New South Wales. Like Queensland didn't have fucking anything except for like, oh, you'd be like a kick in the air. Like, ooh, nothing. Yes. That was all they had. Like, they just looked – they looked clueless. They had no fucking idea how to play rugby league. They had no idea how to attack. Like, they did nothing. Nothing. They did nothing. They looked hopeless. Yeah. Absolutely pathetic. That was almost part of it last night was like – Queensland over the last two games have got fucking annihilated. Like, it's 70 to 6, I think, is it? 76 to 6. 76 to 6 collective where you just go, oh, Jesus, like – this is starting to get like, and the try they scored, so one the try they scored was Tommy Turbo slipping off a tackle. Like, you know what I mean? It's one of those things. that's almost like that doesn't happen very. They it's like they like didn't scoring. actually wasn't some well worked play. There's nothing. They just they haven't looked like scoring a single point other than that try they scored where Tommy slips over. Yeah. Otherwise, makes the tackle on Cable not a problem. Yeah. 
And, you know, it, he's just going, Jesus Christ. Like, we need to put this beast out of its misery. That's the, they're the worst. Like, Queensland Rugby League needs to be euthanized. They're the worst rugby league team, origin team ever. Now, everyone's like, well, you should last time. It's like, yeah, dude, we were off by fucking eight months. That's all that was. That's all that was. Look, and the timing through us, COVID year, like it was just, it was, we were a little off with the calculations. These things happen. When you're talking about the history of the universe, 13 billion years old, trying to nail it down to a specific moment, yeah. it's hard. Our models got close. Eight months is essentially correct. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Well, it's well, like, like with the margin for error, it is correct. Exactly. It is correct. So, so we were right. We were right. It was just that we were fucking, you know, bees dick off. Bees dick off. Now I said it. I said it in the read, which you may have already heard, punters and dribblers. But I'm starting to think and really, honestly, believe that this squad, this 17 men, might be the best sporting team of all time. Let that just hang in the air. Best sporting team of all time. I mean, in the history of man. I mean, just let it hang in, in the, the history air, of mankind. Let it hang. In the history, man. All time. You've All time won. best side. You've won you shut that. You shut, 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 shut the fuck up. Hey. One in a row. It's our moment. It's our moment. Not Let yet. it hang in the air. Greatest sports team of all time. Not even the best origin team of all time. Are we ruling that out? I don't think we rule that out. I just think when you look at the, the W's in the duffel bag, yeah. you go, I mean... Could the eight in a row side at their peak handle those boys? Fuck no, dude. No way, bro. Jesus. Not for a second. GI is a better version an Aldi of version of Tom Trebojevic. There, I said it. <laughs> there, I said it's it. Been said. It's been said. It's been said. And that's no disrespect to Greg, who's close to my favourite player all time. You're just not Tom Trebojevic or Latrell. You know what? You're a you're a you're an you're Aldi Trell. Well, he's a he's a poor man's Latrell. Yeah. He's a poor man's Latrell, yeah. which is no disrespect. Billy Slade is a, is a poor man's Teddy. No yeah. disrespect. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, Thurston and, and who? Kronk? Yeah. Cameron Smith is a poor man cook. Yeah. Poor, poor man's cook. <laughs> poor, he's a poor cook. He's a poor man's cook. Poor man's cook. Uh, Cleary, obviously, a rich man's Thurston. Yep. And poor Kronk. obviously, Luai and uh, Lockyer are probably on par, would you say? Well, listen, it's early on in Luai's career, so I'm saying if I'm tracking it, <laughs> I'd say that Lockie is a poor man's Luai. Uh, and so if is If you Kronk. track it up. If you were just tracking it. Yep. Um... And look, that's just based on like truth, you know. Like it's not on it's not on anything sort of like. Well, all we can do on this podcast, Tom, is tell the truth yeah. to the punter and the dribbler. Yeah, tell it how we see it. And what I see is that last year was a COVID year. You write that off. Um, we've basically won three in a row. Yeah, we're going for our fourth. We're going for our fourth, and you know the eight in a row streaks in big trouble. You know what else is funny is that the, the Queensland. Uh, it's the shortest reign in Origin history because they only had the, the shield for, for like eight months as opposed to a year. So like they're losers, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. No, I, that makes a lot of sense. That's like, you know, you only had the fucking shield for eight months. It's not even considered a real victory. You got to hold it for 12 months. Otherwise, it's not a thing. No, no, 100%. Uh, tough not out for all the Queenslanders though. Cherry Evans, like he he looked like a man who... Well, he was broken. He was. He'd been snapped in half, like physically and mentally and yeah. emotionally. But well, like I mean, him and Munster, and obviously Daly, when he plays for the Manly Warringah Seagulls, he is uh, a friend to us, and uh, you know we love him. But when he's wearing Marona Queensland, with the great respect, it's fucked Daly Cherry Evans. Him and Munster didn't do shit. Now their forwards looked weak as piss. Like Queensland, they started well, but. They just sort of slipped into a fucking. Well, they slip. You know what? I, you know what I think happened, Tom. And this is just you know an astute rugby league mind. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And so just, yeah, just stop what you're doing and tune in right now. Listen extra hard. I I thought after ten minutes or five minutes even doubt crept back into the to the Maroons. Yeah. The effort level went down and they sort of fell into um, a cycle of like. Just reactivity, like yeah. reacting to what we do, trying to stop the throbbers, trying to stop the throbbers, like, yeah. but not go, you know, there didn't seem to be any game plan of their own. Well, really. J- Joey kept saying in commentary as well, he's saying the pockets of attack for New South Wales are just like overwhelming. It was like, you've got left side, right side, then it was like middle, in the middle, the 
middle third, Corey Parker. Uh, mm. But then just like all these little like all these little pockets of attack that are just like completely overwhelming. It's like if you have a wall of throbbers coming at you, much mm. like a tidal wave or yes. an avalanche, yes. an avalanche of throbbers. Yes. Or, or a tidal wave of throbbers. Or a tidal wave of throbbers. I just thought because we're on terrestrial land that maybe avalanche of throbbers. Yeah, but, yeah, but I get that. But obviously, you know, the tidal wave comes onto shore and moves throughout the coastal town. That's true. And it's almost like if you're on terrestrial land and you get an avalanche, a tidal wave of throbbers, mm. you're out of your depth. Yeah. If you don't climb a palm tree and climb on quickly. Yeah. Assuming you live in over. a tropical area where Assuming, palm trees exist. Well, that, yeah. And that's where you see a lot of tidal waves historically, Tom. Coastal areas. Yeah. Palm trees. Palm trees. At Al. But I'm saying that, you know, like tropical, like, you know, south coast of Australia has no palm trees. It's still, you're, you're in a gum. Yeah. If a tidal wave comes, you're in a gum. Yeah, yeah. Look, we're getting bogged down. But it was important that we covered that. <laughs> um... If you've, got a, if, you, if, you, if you've got a tidal wave of throbs coming at me, yeah, it's yeah, going to be... What are you going to do? What are you going to do, bro? Yeah. What are you going to do? What you saw last night was a pathetic bunch of Queenslanders trying their best not to get 50 put on them again. That's what I saw last night. That was night. it. That was I the goal. I didn't see a team that knew they could win or thought no. they could win or wanted to win. I saw a team that was like, if we get 50 put on us again, I might not sleep again. That's what I saw. I saw losers yeah. out there. Now, that's with all the greatest respect in the world because, you know, we respect our Queensland brethren to a certain degree. But brethren. You know, I'm fucking up today. But <laughs> when it comes down to it, you're not on our level. No, you're not on our level. And, and, and it is what it is. Let's like, you know, Penrith, fucking an elite rugby league side in clubland. Bulldogs, not up to it. No. They're we're the, the Panthers, yeah. you're the Bulldogs. That's it. Well, we're Manly, they're the Bulldogs, I'd prefer. Well, but we're Manly, you're the Broncos. Yeah. That's I would almost say it. Queensland are like Manly pre-turbo this season. Well, if no, I would say they, like the if Broncos. If they had their first choices, then the game would have been different. Kind of like what happened with Manly. No, nah, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't, okay, have, been. Have, it wouldn't it, have been different. What about this? What about this? We, without Turbo, have won two games of rugby league. How many of the games have the Broncos won? I think two. Mm. So, like, we're not fucking worse who than would you, who did you? Who would you need... So Ponga is really you'd it, right? Ponga, you'd have Harry Grant, you'd have Reed Marnie. Right, but you had Harry, that would have made a difference. Bro, you had, believe, hold on, would have made hold on. A difference. You had Harry Grant in game one and, and he was dog and, shit. And he played 80 minutes after not playing any Yeah, you got like beaten 50 to six. Yeah, okay. Plus, get the fuck rid of Kyle Felt. But that's, yeah, that's really, he's your first choice fucking get, winger. <laughs> what, no, you put, He was the first no, winger pick. Val Holmes goes back to the wing when Ponga goes to fullback. Val Holmes plays on the wing. Right, but you Val Holmes was playing on the wing. You obsessed with Kyle Felt. You think Val, he's the best player of all time? Kyle Felt was on that. the wing whether Val Holmes was fullback or not. What about Coates? Coates got dropped for I fucking know, that was Kyle Felt. Because Paul he was Green so, doesn't so know Kyle what Felt doing. was your first choice winger. Which on that's, on you, choice winger, that's on you, dude. That's on you. That's on Paul Green. Queenslanders don't, don't get even Origin. Know that fucking Ronaldo Molotalo's from Portugal or wherever, so he can't play Origin. Mate, you don't get Origin. In the first game, Bro, all Paul, I heard was, Paul Green "Oh, fucking origin. look how good our side is." You know, we got yeah. fucking Harry Grant, we got DCE, we got Munster, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got 50 put on you. Yeah, yeah, like yippee, yippee, yeah. The fourth yeah. string fullback and third and fourth string hookers. Do you honestly think that would have made a difference? I think it would have made a difference. Do you I wanna, think it would have made, made zero difference? Do you honestly think it would have made zero difference? I don't well, think it would have made. You probably, okay. well, well Val Holmes showed his immaturity by throwing that fucking ball that was never on yeah. and then Luttrell intercepts it. Maybe that doesn't happen if Pong is playing and maybe you don't get six, six less points, but you still lose and lose. Lose well. Lose well. Um, I will say... Um, Maybe though he might have thrown it. So what, what? What is the difference then of the essentially twenty-four point makeup? Yeah, okay, put it this way. Put it this no, way. This what, Even I mean, no, no, what is, let me let me say from something. Game one to game two. Who do you, okay? Who do you put in the centers then? In a perfect world. In a perfect world. Who's your first choice centers? First choice centers. Well, who's in this? Uh, Gagai probably stays. Yep. All right. Yep. And then, so that's first choice. He's he's there, right? He yep. is already uh, there. Brenko Lee. He where's Brenko Lee? He's. Just come back from injury. Why didn't you bring him in? Because Paul Green is well, he's not injured. Yeah, he's, he's not injured. injured. You could have picked him. You could have picked him. Because I don't know. They want Kirk. Um, I will say this. So for the first two games, you've picked the exact same set. I'm not parent. sticking by mm. Brank early. I don't. Yes, and that to is mark ridiculous. Up, to, mark, no, to, ma to, ma to mark two of the great of the game's great thoroughbreds yeah. all time. Yeah. Since 1908, they may be the greatest set. The two pairing. most pure thoroughbreds of all time. Yeah. And you've it. picked in consecutive games. Gagai and Kurt Capewell of back rower fame to defend them. Yeah, you're, you're right there. You don't get origin. You don't get origin. Yeah. 
Oi, no, we'll just fucking toughen up. We'll be all right. Queensland get origin. We'll pick a different winger. Paul Green or Jonathan Thurston carrying him to his only premiership. Yeah, Paul Green. I think that's, yeah. A lot of Queenslanders are now starting to go like, who the fuck's Paul Green? (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like without JT, <laughs> someone said that they go. I'd be, I'd love to know the stats. Maybe random stats guy or Michael Pride can do it. But like, what's Paul Green's win percentage without Jonathan Thurston playing? <laughs> he doesn't look like he knows what the fuck he's doing. They had Paul Green and Neil Henry in the coach's box. That's what you want. That's what you want. Like to like Neil, like Neil Henry never won a comp as a coach. Um, do, okay, we all know. Everyone knows. Neil Henry's got less than a fifty percent win rate as a coach. That's who you want. Everyone know everyone knows that when it comes to origin, it's about boying the boys. Yeah. You need a boy boyer. That's why Mal did so well. That's why Freddie does so well. You need some Wayne of the Bennett. boys. Wayne Bennett. Some of the boys, the boys. Gus Gould. Are you telling me you'd follow Paul Green into battle? Paul Green of brings club footy tactics to origin <laughs> game fame. He of- ain't boying nobody. Dude, in his press conference, which I watched. At fucking 11.30 last night after thinking Channel 9, we're going to play it on air because that's how they teased it. And then they never did. And then the broadcast finished and I'm sitting there at fucking 11.30 going, why am I still here? (laughs) Um, He was bereft of ideas. (laughs) He sat there and he was like, the amount of times, the amount of questions he just answered, I don't know to, was like, oh, bruh, (laughs) this is not what you want. And Cherry Evans, Cherry was given more answers. Cherry's like, yeah, we probably need to change our game plan. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Maybe fuck this guy off Hey Mate at half time They were like So you know Paul Like what do you What do you think For the second half Are you, you going to stick To the game plan Or are you going to Toss things up And he goes Oh yeah mate um, <laughs> yeah, Probably a bit of both <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Terrific Terrific Well I hope that was Your speech to the players At half time Because that was as vague And uninformative As we've come to expect And you were just like Holy fuck This guy has no Fucking answers No At all Nothing What do you do As evidenced by And I, I keep going on about it Because it makes no Fucking sense Tom and Latrell Had a fucking field day In game one and you pick the exact same centre pairing yeah. to defend them. It doesn't make any sense. And they, and they ended, not just that, Queensland ended up with the same back five as game one when Coates came into the squad. Yeah. So they literally made no change. Literally nothing back. changed because yeah. Ronaldo got fucking, yeah. so they literally just went back. It was, everything was the same. <laughs> And you know what? They didn't and score. Showed. They didn't score as many points, but you'd yeah. probably put that down to like the fucking Papali coming in. Maybe. I don't know, but like they played better. They didn't really play better, but that's sad. They first, started better. First time yeah. they've been held to nil at Suncorp. Uh-huh. Ever. You, I love that. That's a fuck you to Queensland. I tell you what else is crazy, and I feel like now we have to stop saying it. Eight in a row. The last one of those was 2013. Right? So that's almost 10 years ago. Like, it's like me losing... It's like Manly losing on the weekend and, and me going, 2011. 2011, we had a fucking good team. We won the comp that year. Like, yeah, dude, we get it. We know that was a great run of origin football for your side. But that was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but eight straight. Yeah, dude, we get eight straight. Yeah. But we just beat you 50-6 to six and 26-0 to nil in Suncorp, back-to-back Queensland games. You tried to stack the deck against us. You then picked the exact same side and fucking Paul Green as coach and we're beating the shit out of you. I would say this. Fuck eight in a row. I would say this. If you rock up to an Origin series, okay, you do nothing after you lose 50-6, to six, you've already picked Paul Green as coach. If you think that saying eight in a row – at the door on the way into the ground is going to get you a win. It's not. You don't you've get got to go out and you you got to go out and win the game. Yeah. To win the game. Do you know what I mean? You saying eight in a row doesn't count as a win. No. Eight in a row. Eight straight. Eight in a row. Yeah, dude. Sure. You, like, like if but you, like if you, you need to win tonight. If you if you guys don't fix this shit, we could win ten in a row. Yeah. And then you saying eight in a row is going to look a bit stupid. You can, you could say eight in a row for ten years, and then you sound dumb. <laughs> And we get it. You're not big maths guys and girls up there, but like, fuck. And then you like, I don't know whether there's obviously just beating Queensland is satisfying, right? Obviously that's satisfying. Well, it warms the heart, Tom. But listening, listening to Queensland legends, those who have done it and won for their state, something Queensland don't currently understand how to do. Cam Smith, Billy Slater, Fatty Vaughton, all just like basically 
you know, like you're hearing depressed individuals on air broadcast. Oh, mate, you could hear, you could hear, like Joey was like, "Where are the points coming from, uh, Billy?" And he's like, "Oh, you just got to get the, you just got to get the ball to, uh, you just got to get the ball to Munster." Yeah, yeah. Okay, they're setting up here to go and let. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Uh, Val Holmes just did uh, a fucking I think grubber Val kick. Just dropped it. That literally had oh, no, he, oh, he the grubber kick, kick yeah, one bounce, dead. and then dead. Yeah, and you're like, on third tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great He's play. Like, oh no, it's fifth tackle. Oh, they're just going to do a one out pass, short ball. Yeah, here we go. It was, it was good stuff. The, we put it on our gram. Um, Fatty Vorton coming back from an ad break or something on Channel Nine, and he didn't know his mic was live yet. And he goes, and it was just before James Brace he came in. Fatty just goes. I don't even want... Uh, why are we even bothering with a game three? And then James Rose goes, Welcome back to Friday Night Football. <laughs> the Blues win or whatever the fuck it is. Welcome back to Origin. And Fatty's just going, Why the fuck are we even playing game three? You're like, That's, That is Queensland spirit seeping out of them. You know, seeping out of them, basically. That's fucked if you're, you know... You don't want to hear that from your legends. From your legends. And they like, just, they had like, no we answers. We may as well not play the third game because no. we, we know we got swept. Just the masturbatory pro New South Wales rhetoric going on as well was so good. I tell you what, Rabs was in form last night. Rabs, obviously, you know, an ornament to the game of rugby league. And, you know, he's used a little more sparingly. But hearing him full-throated, no, uh, he was, he was screaming good. out fucking, you know, there's a couple of moments where he like sort of like I don't know if he's looking elsewhere or he's like just slows down a bit. Where like when Latrell got that fucking where he stole the ball off Welsh, yeah, one on one, he just like didn't address it. And then someone was like, "Is he going to talk about?" It? Okay, and then I was like, I think Joe was like, "Oh, he's fucking he's stolen fucking stolen the ball." I think it would be a little bit of like awareness, right? Like he's probably just not as sharp. Well, he's definitely not. You can't be as sharp. Of course, he's not. Yeah, he's you can't a, be as sharp. Getting, there was another one where. Uh, where they penalised Cameron Murray for being in front of the play the ball and New South Wales ran away and scored and Rabs was just like commentating the try. Yeah, he called the whole thing. But I think that's also a little bit more like, because I heard that as well, should have been a try, even though technically it shouldn't have been. By Um, by the rule book. By the rule book, it it shouldn't be. But, you know, but like, I think the reason he did that was because if eventually it got deemed a try, he would be thinking like origin uh, highlight memory Mm -hmm. shit. Like, let's just call the fucking thing. Yeah. And stay with the play rather than if he's like, oh, no, it's a penalty. And then they go, oh, actually, it was a try. Then you miss out on that, like, sick bit of commentary. Mm. But the, the fucking whole game started with that huge hit from Jai Arrow. So, like, the first bit of commentary you heard was Rabs going, me and my old man were laughing last night. He called me up and he was like, uh, <laughs> he just goes, the first, thing, the first thing dad says to me, he goes, oh! Because it was like, that was the first thing Rabs did when Jairo fucking pumped uh, yeah. Payne Haas or whoever. And he's like, that was the first fucking thing Rabs said all game. How good. Oh! Um, but I, lo- I thought Rabs was good last night. Um, enjoyed it thoroughly. Tom. He enjoyed it thoroughly. Now, as we said, 26 uh, nil. I mean, as a coach, Eddie, mm. obviously the points are pleasing, but I am... More happy with the with the with the, with the donut, mate. Yeah. Well, look, you and I went up to Kingscliff during the week, and we spoke at length about you know donuts. turning up for each other and and, and earning donuts yeah. and what that what that means for for your legacy. Yeah, a couple of donuts on the resume may go a long yeah. way in yeah. this sport, in this contest. Donuts consumed. Yeah, and it, well, it's, I'm just glad that our message got across. It did. And, I mean, if it weren't for a statistical anomaly in game one, it would have been back to back donuts. Look, I'm I'm prepared to scrub Capel's try. I think most people would agree with yeah. me based on the fact that Tommy slipped over and he never usually does. Um, I'm prepared to say that it's 76 nil. Can we go to Sydney and earn another donor? Yeah. I'm not ruling it out. The line's 18 and a half already. That's going to keep climbing. That I is reckon by game day, if we've got a dry track punters and dribblers, we might be looking at a, like a 24-point line. Yeah, right. Maybe even higher. Maybe higher. Maybe 50-point start. Might be a fi- it might be our first ever 50-point start. You know what? If they pick Gagai and Capel in the centres again... 50 points. 50 points. Fucking put the house on it. Now, can we talk about what was potentially one of the greatest bed shits in origin history around Ronaldo Mulatalo. I think we have to, Tom. We have to address the big issue. That was... Obviously, I feel very sorry for Ronaldo because that's a... Let's f- start there. Let's start there. It's a, that's a fucking cunt of a time to get told. Dude, <laughs> dreams ripped away from you on game day. Dashed. Dashed to the wind. 
Who the fuck allows that to happen? Firstly, like Queensland Rugby League are obviously constantly trying to get players who are ineligible to play for them because they despise developing their own talent because they're a bunch of fucking weak dogs. Now, it gets, look, let's address this. First and foremost, Ronaldo came to this country when he was 14. The rules... Or 13 state, and 10 months. But the rules state you've got to be here by 13, yeah. right? Now... You might say to yourself, what the fuck? Like, that's ridiculous. Let me just backtrack on something and remind you all of a couple of things. Take now, us back, Ed. There was a time, and I'm talking about the GI years, mm. where the, the selection criteria were fucking ambiguous, like super ambiguous, and people didn't like the grey. People didn't like the grey at all. So what they tried to do was clean it up with rules like... You've got to fucking be in the country by 13. There's another, a number of other rules around yeah. like where you played your junior footy and that sort of shit. But there are specific cutoff dates. Why? To try and bring clarity to the issue. That's why they're there. Mm. Because before everyone fucking whinged and complained and you got people like Greg Inglis who was born and raised in fucking Taree. Maxville. Maxville. Until he was like 19. Israel Flower was born in Minto. Exactly. That's what we wanted to clean up and that's what the rules are for. So don't fucking come out now being like, this is fucking ridiculous. It's like, no, no, no. Queensland Rugby League should have been on top of this. Yeah. And if they were a little unsure, they should have broached the issue, I don't know, years ago. Now, I think I think one of the things is, so if you listen to uh, former, former Queensland coach Paul Green, <laughs> 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 um, he was like, the way he explained it after in the post-match press conference was like, all the eligibility shit is done by the NRL. So when you sign your NRL contract and you state your eligibility, that is all NRL. All Queensland's provided with is a database of what players are available and Mulatalo's on that fucking database. So, so I, it's an NRL fuck So up. I think it's an NRL fuck up, at least from what Paul Green, who we can't necessarily take as gospel right now, <laughs> just in the current situation. But that's what he says. Because he played all his like under 16 yeah. Queensland and under 18. I played 16. Yeah, so I think what I would say to that though, is that 16, I don't think people are checking 16, 18, 20s, really. You know what I mean? No, but they should be. They should be checking, but I'm saying I can see how that one slipped through the cracks. Look, it's a cunt of a situation. Make no mistake. I personally... But he is, by the letter of the law, yeah, ineligible. ineligible. I personally... I would have let him play. I would have let him play. I think 100%. It's, I think if he that had is played, just, you guys were done. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ronaldo Molotalo played. It I would have looked game. at the situation and gone, is he a threat? No. Nah. <laughs> like, who gives a shit? That's how I would have yeah. played it last night. I, would, I don't know, like, because I think it was the New South Wales Blues CEO. But apparently, yeah. but apparently he was alerted to it because Queensland Rugby League put up a post saying when Ronaldo <laughs> came to the country and they were like, hang on. Yeah, well, there's some dribbler noticed. Some dribbler then informed a journo and then I think the journo, or like, or it felt in, like it came through like a journo to New South Wales Rugby League, then New South Wales Rugby League went and fucking lodged like a formal complaint, which I think is fucking I ridiculous. think it's over the top. It's a scaredy cat move. Well, I don't know about scaredy cat because we <laughs> pumped the fuck out of you. I, but you know what? I think it rattled you. It did rattle you. It rattled the fuck out of Queensland. Because it was, it was like, oh, these cunts aren't fucking around. Like, it's pretty dark. Well, it's it's like ruthless origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, ruthless. Folklore sort of shit. It's ruthless it's like, shit. And Queenslanders won't forget it. We know that for no, sure. But, but I think it was a little hard. I think that was probably the only reason Queensland started off playing well was because they were playing on pure rage. And then, obviously, that's not sustainable. Rage-based well, rugby league, not sustainable. Well, look, has, have you ever seen a marathon winner win an Olympic medal based on rage? No, no. you can't run on rage. No, you can't run on rage. Maybe for a sprint. Meters, yeah. 200 metres, maybe. Yeah. I don't even think you can run 400 metres on rage. No. You, you? There's a certain... No, I 400 on rage. No, no way. You'd no. have to be pissed off. No, I, I reckon 150. I reckon 150 is probably where you max out rage. 200 if you're elite at bottling rage. But well, you've got to be elite at bottling rage. Not, not many of them around. No, and certainly not Queensland. you Mulatalo after getting told he could. He would have gone, gone, gone 200. <laughs> Mulatalo could probably fucking do 200 in a pinch point on is, rage. Point is, he would have run out. Yeah. Puff. But I think that's what happened with Queensland, right? They started bottled rage yep. and then they expended all of the rage reserves within the first 10 to 15 yep. and then they were fucked. I, look, but as a New South Welshman proud through and through, I think it was, a, I think it was a little ruthless. I think it was a bit much. I think it was a little, I think, I think that it was, was a little a bit, bit much. much. And the NRL were like, and I get it, the NRL were like, we can't actually really give an exemption on this shorter notice. I would have just gone, fuck it. I would have gone. Let's not worry. The about problem it. is if he fucking ripped, 
<laughs> like that's the that's the problem. If he fucking scored three tries and Queensland win, you're going. That is bullshit. Like, if, and when you South Welshman, we'd be yeah. sitting here going, "This is one of the great travesties in Origin history." Yeah, yeah. but I think that's also. No, the, I don't think we would have done that. The beauty of the beauty of being sort of atop the the Origin heap, yes, is that you can be like, we actually are um, merciful. When you when you're polishing up another shield, Tom, yeah, you can you can be merciful. You can be merciful. But if if we'd lost, then I would have had zero mercy. I would have called for heads to roll. Of course, but we're not doing that. No. We're spit shining another shield. Yes. That's for me. No. He's, in his heart, he believes he's a Queenslander, and that's all that should matter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> choppy close. <laughs> in his heart, he believes he's a Queenslander. That's all that should matter, right? So he identifies as a Queenslander. I'm with him on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Of course he is <laughs> fucking him and D.O. That's Dave. so funny. That's how you... <laughs> that's the most dribbly that's statement. How, that's how you should fucking define supporters as well. Like, like Dior Dave goes for Queensland, but wouldn't be able to play for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not eligible to go for Queensland, dude. I'm you're sorry. not eligible. You, no, but I feel like a Queensland in my heart. Yep, cool. Not in the rules, though. <laughs> not in the rules. The same eligibility criteria should be applied to support. But that's only for origin, really, though, right? Because you can't do of for course. teams. What the fuck yeah. are you talking yeah. about? I thought you were just well, talking about teams generally. Dude, you can go for whatever team you want. It yeah. doesn't matter. But origin. Yeah. <laughs> origin. Wow. Yeah, Dave, you can't identify as a Queenslander. So where to now? Where to now? Um, uh, I want to okay, well, let's, uh, let's go here because this could be interesting. Um, I'm hearing whispers, Tom. Obviously, we have, uh, you know, we know people at the tippy top. Yeah. Um, you know, insert name here. You know who I'm talking about. Hearing whispers that Sydney might be at risk for yeah. game three. Yeah. Thinking about taking it to Newcastle, I fucking love it. Well, that's what we've been calling for anyway. I've been calling for it anyway, Tom. I think that we need to reward the people of the Hunter for their terrific support to the code and yeah. to the team yeah. over the years. And I think what, what, what better victory parade than to put another 50 on Queensland in front of the Novocastrians. Yeah, so I think the thing that they were saying was uh, Andrew Abdo of NRL CEO fame um, – a half. So I think the lockdown here, as it currently stands, who knows how the old dribbler variant progresses. Yeah. I but think I, I've got a hunch we'll be in it for longer than two weeks. Yeah, I feel, feel I feel like we might be as well. If we are, then it goes to Queensland. But even if we come out on the ninth, uh, sorry, not Queensland, not Queensland. Sorry, could go to could go to Newcastle. Imagine if we had three games. There's kind of I kind of don't mind that. Let's well, knock them off some, three times yeah, in a row yeah, in someone Queensland. Someone was like, have a game at Gold Coast. Yeah, knock off every fucking big city up yeah. there and just go. Holy fuck, we are the greatest side of all time. The greatest side of all time. Three Queensland venues, and we pump you in all three. Could you? I well, I almost like that. I like that as well. There is way better narrative. Have it in the Gold Coast. Like have it in Newcastle if you want, sure. But have it at Seabus Super Stadium, and we just flop our big blue cocks onto. Our, I, don't know, I don't think the boys' shafts would fit in that stadium. It's not big enough. You know what? That's fine. We'll leave the shafts at the door. Yeah, take your shafts off. You won't even need to. I think you just sort of run around with it attached. You can just only stay in one position like a foosball player. Otherwise, everyone's <laughs> tripping over dicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can go forward and back. That's all right. Yeah. Forward and back and a little bit of lateral movement. Yeah, a little bit of lateral, but nothing much. Nothing crazy though. Because Look, we could we could if you put our boys on a foosball table, we'd still we'd still dominate. Yeah, fucking oath. Even would. if you're running in that very predictable. Just channels, manner, yeah, yeah. Because we'll run over the top of you. Um But yeah, I like that yeah. narrative, Tom. I like both of them. I like the victory parade at Newcastle. I like winning three games in Queensland, never been done before, won't be done again. Because of the circumstances, yes. obviously. I think that's a nice little fucking bow. bow. Uh, obviously, we're going to sweep them. And that's what I'm excited for as well. Is the first Get the brooms out. We haven't swept in a long time. We haven't time. swept, I think, the early 2000s. And I think Queensland only swept once in their uh, oat straight. So a sweep's hard to come by. But I would say that this might be one of the most locked in sweeps. When was our last sweep? 2000. 2000. So we've been waiting for a fucking while. 21 years for yeah. a sweep. And you know what? This is the Queensland equivalent of us. Like, we may as well still be on. We swept in 2000. It's like, yeah, cool, dude. Cool. No, we're not claiming that. Sorry, 2013? When like, did we what was the world that? like in 2013 when you got your eighth? No idea. Completely fucking different. I Who gives I a shit? What, I don't even know. You forget that, yeah, there was the eight and then there was one, like, New South Wales 
win that didn't really count. And then there was another three in a row. He so it was really 11 count. from 12. Hello, 11 from 12, right. So you, you know what you're sounding like now? Yeah, now you sound like Penrith going, we're undefeated in regular season games. Like, cool, dude. Cool. But not in by games. But not in by games well, and in grand in finals games. when it cool. counts. Like you're still one in a row against the second string Queensland side. Well, we're two in a row. We just won two games. Well, your one series. Oh, one series. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, only three had four, we're three and four years. Oh, so, now, so now we're talking three and four. No, no, no. And essentially talk. we won last year. Oh, you did? Yeah. Look, we against said, the worst mate, Queensland we team. Said, no, this is the worst Queensland team. Yeah, but last year was the worst. No, no that was... No, no, um, no. Mate, at, at in the, the history time, of the universe, the you, eight months is the... Is the uh, that's margin for error. error. The so margin we're, for error is probably a million years, but we but fucking we got we've down, eight down to eight months. So, so we said that at the start of the show. You're obviously not listening. Yeah, no. You're obviously not listening. <laughs> that. That's all right. That's Back okay. in your box there. But so what does all what does this all mean for the punter and the dribbler? <laughs> we're going to sweep them, is what it means. Get your brooms. Get out, your brooms boys. out. That's what we're saying. Do you have a broom, Dave? I I do own a broom. Okay, well you'll have to come in family, here but... dressed in a maid's outfit with yeah, a broom, a little little dress on, <laughs> and a little thong, French maid, <laughs> little thong. Yeah, we'll give you we'll give you uh you know you can shave your legs if you want. Yep, it's up to you. It's encouraged, just aesthetically. I think you'll look nicer. But I think so. I think you look much nicer. Um. I, a couple of things before we move on from Origin. And my God, it's been nice to... I'm just checking my notes as well. Yeah, that's you, fine. While you continue to um, into yarn, Tom. Just in the lead up to this game, Danny Widler dropped an article, I think yesterday, about Francis Molo. So obviously there was a horrible story a few years ago. Francis Molo playing in like the Queensland Cup. He put a hit on this guy. I think his name was Sonny Ackerman. The guy died. James, James Ackerman. James Ackerman? Yeah. Mm. Horrible story. Obviously, that's bad. Like, obviously, that's sad, right? Like, that's terrible. But that's the sort of thing that would haunt Francis Moller and the family of fucking James Ackerman. Danny decides to drop the yarn on game day. Like, and it was like, you know, he gets to live his dream while we're still living a nightmare. And you're like, what the fuck is the point of that article? That just seems like it's unfair to fucking... Francis Molo, like it's like, I'm not saying, obviously the family's experience and how they're going is important, right? Like no one's trying to dismiss the way they are feeling, but like on the day of origin to drop an article like that, that was sort of like, it just seems so classless and tacky and shit. And just like, you've got nothing else to write about on the day of fucking origin to like pump up the game and there's get everyone million, fucking jacked. There's a million, there's a million things you could write about and you've decided to go down that. Like, I even think that you could just, like you could write about it in the lead up maybe to the week and just go like Francis Molo, you know, this, how's the Ackerman family? You know, maybe just, but like, it was just so scat. And I just, and we had a fucking heap of people sending it to us as well. But just, I just saw that I'm, you know, like, there are many things that journos do that are like scat, tacky, whatever, but like usually they're in a bit of the vein of the like rugby league humor realm. But then when you see that, you're like, that is just fucking classless, I thought. And like disappointing when you talk about like trying to, you know, put the game in the best light and it's like literally origin to day. And that's what Widler's going with. You're just like, Jesus Christ, dude, what a fucking dribbler. What a dribbler. What a, I don't know what you say to that. No, there's not much else. I just wanted to say that. The other one I thought was funny, though, was, uh, which was in the P's and D's chat, Dobbo from Queensland. Did you see? So Dobbo, who's like uh, the Channel 9 sports reporter on uh, in Queensland, he's also got like a radio show on Triple M. I know him. I used to work with him when I was working at Triple M. Nice dude. But he was on one of the Triple M Oh, trying to fucking hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, so he was on the trip, one of the Triple M shows in Brisbane and he's like, you know, uh, what what Queensland really need to do is get someone like Tino who, you know, the Titans season's over, just get into Tino's ear and just say like, mate, just fucking get into Tommy early, get him out of the game. Who gives a shit if you get a 10-week suspension? Yeah. Like, you listen to the audio of him saying that in what is clearly a person not speaking seriously. Because no one speaks like that, right? Like, no one is... We would have said similar shit. Of course we would. But, like, no one is seriously calling for that. And it's not like it's a fucking funniest joke you've ever heard. I'm not saying it, but, like, no one thinks that a man is serious when they're saying that. Now, whoever these fucking losers are who listen to radio, like, just... And, and call up and complain. Like, he got 
overload. Like there were so many fucking complaints where the next day he had to come out and be like, I was joking, like, sorry, Dude, like tweeting out jokes and shit. Ray Hadley goes on his morning show and fucking roasts him for like five minutes going like, plays the audio and then he's like, you're not very funny, mate. You think you're fucking funny? Like, you know, if you want to be funny like Daryl Broman, da, 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 like, and just like absolutely pillars him. And I'm like, and then he has to come out and apologize again and like apologize to Turbo's family and shit. Oh I'm like, God. bro. When did people get so fucking serious? And you that's need what's to relax. That's what's crazy. Is you got someone like Ray Hadley, who's the most anti PC fucking man on the planet, and yet being so and fucking yet being PC. so fucking PC about this, and just going in on Dobbo, and you're like, dude, this is fucking insanity. Bro, I just googled Ray Hadley apology, and there's just too many results. Like this man is no Correct. stranger to controversy. <laughs> he just so, googled Ray so Hadley like, apology. <laughs> That's it as well. Like, there's like what seven hundred Google pages. Yeah, the irony of someone like him going and like he went so hard on him. He was just like bagging him out so hard, which again, like whatever. But you just go on like this is. Apparently, I heard that it was just that Hadley was dirty because his show got taken off some of the Triple M regional stations. They just didn't. Mm -hmm. They like, like they switched him out for someone else, and he's just salty. I would never fucking clue if that's true or not. But oh, like, who, who the fuck? Who knows? the fuck knows? But it was just like such an unnecessary swipe at him in what was so clearly a joke. If you're gonna have a like, if you if you want to if you see an opportunity to have a crack at Dubbo there, Ray Hadley, you got to do it in a like with a bit of jest. You know what I mean? Like have a fucking giggle back. Rather you know than I mean? trying to make Rather it than serious, be such a fucking serious cunt. Yeah, because it's it's very. Uh, shit energy to be around. Yes. And I don't want to sound woo-woo when I say that, but it's like, it's a bit gross. Yes. It's like, bro, relax. Like, you are very intense <laughs> and I need you to bring it down a couple of fucking levels because yeah, you're ruining yeah, yeah. my day. <laughs> the, Listening to you is putting me on edge. The, I'm now the, anxious and I don't know why. Like, that's sh it. Calm the, the mentality of like aggression. and uh, like yeah, and It's like, like road rage when some cunt's fucking losing it because he missed the yellow or something. Yeah, it's He's almost like, like Hadley's show the horn is and recording. Like, Whoa, bro. Whoa. Hadley Get shows the like, horn. Someone's just recorded a guy in his car having road rage is Ray Hadley's show. <laughs> mate, you shouldn't the horn shouldn't be used unless someone's on their phone and you're like, hurry up. Yeah, mate. exactly. Just hurry a little up. if you're a fucking if you're a big user of the horn, like in rage, I think you need to calm the fuck down. Yeah. But it rates well on radio. Because old people love it. Well, yeah. Well, because that's because old people, and I've never really understood this. I don't know. I don't know what it's about. I could be generalization generalizing here. That's generally what we do. Old people seem to get more pissed off as they get older. Shouldn't you get more relaxed? No, I think maybe they uh, like the fuse shortens after like a certain amount of years dealing with dead shits. I can understand that, but I feel like Hadley's always been like. Had hand on the horn. Sort he's, of like, he's been on the fucking horn. His he's been on the life. horn his whole life. He's never taken the fucking hand off the horn. And his response to Dobbo exemplified that because I was like, this is crazy town. And if you're one of the fucking losers who complain, firstly, you are just so beyond help in terms of being able to understand when someone's being serious or not. But also like, hey, don't be a fucking loser who complains and calls up like radio and be like, that's yeah. fucking disgraceful. <laughs> Mate, pe people, people commit significant hours out of their life to complaining about shit. Bro, There's, and uh, you're, you're listening to Triple M and complaining about like, P, like essentially complaining for PC culture. Like, why, why are you listening, listening to Triple yeah, M? Triple, Triple M's M. meant to be a bit more fucking, you know, yeah, like yeah. if you were offended by that sort of shit, then you've gone looking for it. You're like, I'm going to go to the yeah. Yobbo station and I'm going to fucking listen for Yobbo shit. I'm going to yeah. complain. That's 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 Ned Flanders watching like the films at his house and then writing to the things. There's a Simpsons episode where he just complains to like every news show. About yeah, well, uh, that, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not saying that it's Christians, but Christians, I think... Love to complain. <laughs> well, they're easily offended. The Christian. They're easily offended. The Christian. Not to say that this is a Christian situation here, but they'll defend Cardinal Pell, but they'll complain about Dobbo. <laughs> about Dobbo. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dobbo needs to be stopped. <laughs> Dobbo. Protect Cardinal Pell. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, shit. Is that uh, Origin? Yeah, that's Origin. So, Tom, I don't know if any of our listeners are going to know this, but the A-League Grand Final was actually on yesterday. <laughs> Dude, you when you came in here and said that, I was <laughs> shocked. Because all I was thinking over the weekend was like, there's nothing on. Like, unfortunately, lockdown in a rugby league bye week waiting for Origin. Mate, Sydney FC was in the grand final. And people in New South Wales were like, well, Sydney specifically here, being like, there's nothing on. There's nothing to watch. Who? Like, it was not promoted at all. And the higher-ups at the FFA, sure, get out a fucking calendar. Like, <laughs> how did you not see Origin on that night? Dude, that like, is crazy. What? Uh, sorry, there's been bye week. We're in bye weekend territory. Pick a bye week. Put it on Saturday. <laughs> pick, pick, pick a bye weekend. Or but Saturday, but, but Saturday just do a day earlier. Wide open. Saturday had nothing on. I might have even watched it. Probably so, not. But you might have. I might have. There was nothing on. The same day as Origin. <laughs> like... And then, and like, that you imagine just being the FFA guys, or oh, maybe we'll get a bit of coverage in the, in the, in the news cycle, though, Sunday morning, then you wake up, Ronaldo Molotalo kicked out of fucking origin for eligibility. It's like, oh, you're not going to get covered in any sort, mate, this like, whole weekend. No one's talking about it. Like, who won? Uh, Melbourne City yeah, won. Melbourne City 3 1 or 4 1, something like that. One, but yeah. like, then they'll turn around and go, whoop, the ratings are down this year. It's like, wh you, what? Who is running that fucking mess? I would love to know. What their explanation like is. Like next year, for example, Origin, they've abandoned the Sunday time slot. They go back to three Wednesdays. Why? Because they basically gave the AFL this whole weekend. Yes. They get Thursday, they get Friday, they get Saturday of uninterrupted fucking... Wall-to-wall like, -wall AFL. Wall-to-wall -wall AFL, right? Not good for the code. So they're fucking that off and they're going back to, you know, competing pubs. Yes. You know, pound for pound. This was their last opportunity, the A League, to get a fucking to get a free little window. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just and they just it. go, fuck it, let's put it on an hour before origin and see if that rates. No, because what I think the what it'll do is, right, the bloody will get the lead in. Everyone's watching the A League grand final <laughs> and then bang, onto the origin. It's like, no, dude, you know what actually happens is that People have dinner and then people have dinner and get prepared. Or like Fox Sports start their coverage an hour before because they don't get the game. So people will just watch the fucking origin build up. Yeah, I, I cooked dinner yeah. until 7 o'clock and 8, and then I watched the fucking hour lead up. Yeah. That's what I did. That's how you do I it. I wasn't like, well, better watch the A-League and we'll eat. Dale, we'll eat after the origin. No, we'll <laughs> eat after the fucking game because the A-League's on and then New <laughs> South Wales and Queensland are playing and then, you know, like, no, sorry, with the greatest respect. Um, that's one of the more bonehead moves in All administration time. history. Just an absolute shocker. While we're on shockers, Tom, this is like a shocker segment. Yeah, yeah. Shockers with Tom and Eddie. <laughs> Tour de France started the other day. Oh, bro. So stage one. Um, <laughs> this was the dumbest fucking thing. Some seen. dickhead trying to get his placard, his card. I think it was a TV. Sheila. I think it was a guy. I th it looked like a woman. Oh, was it? Yeah. I some, could be wrong. But they're, but they're still looking for like the actual person to like arrest them or find them. Well, could you, mate, I'd be up in the hills. Yeah, you'd be hiding. Heart. I mean, I'm not surprised. She could be dead. Such was the chaos that she caused. So... For clarity, if you haven't seen it, look it up. She or he is yeah, basically... Yeah, it, was, it was a she. It was a she. Yeah. She is fucking sticking her fucking right, her placard, her card out. Facing the camera. Facing the camera, trying to get on TV, not looking that the peloton, in all its fucking glory, <laughs> 10, 12 wide and fucking 50 deep, uh, is powering towards her. It reminded me of uh, The Lion King when Mufasa, when all of that herd's running through that valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this what is, it was this like. is wildebeest stuff. Yeah. And fucking clips a rider and brings down like the whole peloton. Dude, that rider got run over by everyone in that thing. Yeah. And then it was just full pile. There's like bikes going over his neck and, yeah. and shit. Yeah. It was like the epitome of what is wrong with, and if I can sound like an old 32-year-old man, but like just the, the, the like the the look at me generation of like let me get on camera with this fucking sign bang yeah 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 look at where the peloton's coming from you fucking idiot look look if you if if your whole mo was to get on TV you got it you done you, you no, did no no it. go go down to fucking Parliament House and I'm sure there'll be a reporter down there and you can just stand behind them yeah if and that's what you want to do like if like were you there for the bike racing or the fucking cameras. Because if it was for the cameras, then you, way well, easier places to tell go. Tell you what, though, if you if you 
if your goal was to go viral, she gone viral. Oh, I mean, if that was the play, then you've done well, but probably viral for the wrong reason. Was there any injury, like serious injuries off the back of that, Dave? Can you just Yeah, check? there was a couple. That Peloton actually came down again in this final sprint home. Yeah, the the sprint that. home gets really hairy, McClary. People start to jostle for position and shit. And there was another crash and like a couple of guys have had to retire. Again, the whole Peloton comes down. And it just makes me think to myself, these guys are fucking savages yeah going as quick as they do wearing little lycra shorts coming down onto fucking hard asphalt and getting ridden over the top of by like 70 blokes it sounds like utter hell it sounds like hell yeah it's funny because i don't i have always found the tour de france uh to be quite a low energy experience for me when trying to engage in it but i do know there's that a lot of there's a lot of test cricket about it in the in the sense that like not a lot happens but a lot is happening yes i used to stay up back before well we did it we used to watch it even when we lived yeah, together yeah. at uni well, when you're at uni and you stay up till three o'clock every morning smoking billies and living your life I used to love watching it because it would go to like two o'clock. I used to fucking love it. I yeah. can't. I can barely watch the start now. I'm basically in bed. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I used to fucking love the tour because of the way that it's sort of just like you know you're just looking at nice sort of scenery, scenery and just and sort of coast and then and shit happens. Every is now Phil Liggett still doing the damn thing? Well, when I was watching it, they because I I know back in the day the first half used to be like the domestic shit Australian commentators. Check and Phil Liggett still commentates. Phil for the back end. Yeah. So I don't know if when I was watching it was just the too early for Phil or yeah. if Phil's no longer with us. I don't know. I mean, I, I Phil was probably... Is Phil I, with us still? No, Phil's still with us. I don't think Phil's passed. Phil is still with us. Um, Thank God. Just go Phil Liggett, SBS. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, I mean, I think we're just talking to her, that bitch, obviously, respectfully. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah knocking over an entire peloton but i will try and consume a little more of the uh tour but again like it's fucking as you said it's late at night like I'm I, I i i'm i hope they've still got the they used to do like a half an hour review show every night which See, is like a condensed version that's probably too hard for me to watch yeah. yeah. Even though they're like giving you the highlights, it's like I'm It's unrealistic. It's unrealistic for me to sit around and watch a half an hour cycling at dinner time. At dinner time review show uh as that's you liked it as much as i'd love to that's just not going to happen um but he's, yeah that what, was no word he's on phil calling it, he's not calling it anymore he said so the they got rid of phil the greatest well, voice of all he, time he, in he used to call it with the other dude paul sherwin yeah right? i know yeah. paul sherwin passed away uh, did he so i think they just kind of retired that combination and that's yeah. ridiculous that's ridiculous so what phil liggett is the goat phil of is the man He's the Ray fucking Warren of cycling. He's the David Attenborough of cycling. <laughs> He's the David Attenborough of cycling. That's fucking crazy. What a waste of a voice. What's that fucking voice doing? Look, I, I'll give you the hot tip. If the dead shits I heard the other night uh, are his replacement, worst call all time. Can you just Google what's Phil Liggett doing now? Because yeah. if he's just sitting at home like commentating around the house that's fuck that's a waste of a voice i don't know how old phil is maybe he's like you know what phil will be getting on phil liggett he is 77 okay not that old well it's not that young either well what kind of he could be in great nick though sure but he's uh, definitely like on the 14th 15th well, hole. Ray? ray's ray's in his 80s i think yeah it's not saying much about what he's up to these days actually besides. there's no way ray's in his 80s I he was ray's defending lance armstrong can that's you see how old ray sense. warren is yeah. I'm guessing he's in his late 70s. I think he's 81. Is he really? He's 78. There you go. Thank you very much. I know my rabs. Dior's got a video for us of uh, Conrad Harrell or yeah. some shit. Yeah, look, Conrad on the Harrell. Chong. Playing for Leeds. I, I don't think it's on the Chong, no. I don't think he's on the Chong. <laughs> can you turn it so I can see it as well, Dave? Or is this like, do I fucking, do I matter? The look you just gave me there. <laughs> When Who I, like, I did, yeah, yeah. When you, you said like, is he on the chong? <laughs> is this? A, can you just give us some context to what we're watching? Yeah, so Conrad Harrell currently playing for Leeds Rhinos in the Super League. Um, this is a video I saw this morning about an incident that happened to him, which will become clear after you watch it. Sweet. <gasps> oh, cause he got fucking dropped. Yeah. Go again. Gonna, yeah. Oh, 
Holy hell. That guy can fucking throw. Who well, is he that? he fucking landed him, didn't he? Who is that number I, four? I'll have a look. He's a beast. That was a fucking... He hit him, he hit him well. Two shots and he just went down. He was out with the first yeah, one. Yeah, he was. Now, I mean, like... Who knows what the fuck sparked that, but... Who cares? Well, I mean, Conrad got fucking fed there. That's, that's, all we, that's what we do know. That's what we do uh, know. Lee Mossop. Oh, Lee Mossop. Yeah. Mossop. Yeah. Is he any relation to Rex Mossop? Probably not. Uh, Although maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Is he, a, is he an international Lee Mossop? The name just sounds familiar. It does sound familiar. So, is it, uh, he took, uh, so Conor Harrell took offense to Mossop's action in a tackle and that sparked a melee, which resulted in two red cards. Uh, you'd think uh, Mossop got one. Yeah, um, Conor Harrell had to go for an HIA. Fuck off. An HIA? <laughs> you don't come back from getting KO'd flat. Well, if he passes, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, no relation to Rex. Okay, there you go. That's the way it goes. Edward, Test Championship. Obviously, we've been following this closely for a long time with Australia and New Zealand, obviously our two nation states, yep. um, battling it out with obviously everyone else in the world. Um, Australia robbed over the summer... Um, don't want to get into it, but basically we were robbed. I can't even remember if there's any justification for me it saying was, that. There was we got like points taken off us for uh, for a slow overrate. Correct, that's right. And then yeah, we is that why we missed out? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. Qualify, I think yeah. so, yeah. Um, Jesus Christ! I I heard something. I was reading something the other day. I hope I get this right. I may not, but basically it was saying that the Test Championship was such a mess in the way that its points would design and stuff that you would get more points for a drawn two-match series than you would for an away Ashes win. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. The, the, there was the problem with, like, if you're going to do shit like this, you have to make the scoring system crystal fucking clear because it's the only way that you can truly engage. like An audience. It, like, if I know that I get two points for a rugby league win and that any other team that wins any other game is going to get two points. Oh, I'm four points behind Eddie. Well, I need two wins. He needs two losses. Then we're like... You need to make it fucking crystal clear so people can follow it. The Test Championship, I at no point ever knew exactly what was going on and what our chances ever were or what we had to do to fucking get anywhere. Like, the fact that you can get docked points in a Test Championship for a slow overrate, Ivan, thinks fucking ridiculous. Surely that seems like a weird thing to... You know, what, like well, I, I but I, I well, I get where they're coming from because the over rates are fucking painfully slow, and it's their way of saying speed the fucking thing. I up. get that, but surely you can find players. They try. Fucking, yeah, they don't really care, do they? When you got they don't give of a dollars. fuck. It didn't work anyway. But yeah, they just need to do fucking something to make that easier to consume. But we are both half Kiwi, whether you like it or not, at home, and Kiora, baby, yeah, fucking test champs. Test champs, baby. What did you think of the mace? I didn't even see it. Or is that not the thing that's not world number one? Isn't that always the mace? Is that like that long stick with the ball in the end? No. Nah, uh, maybe that's the same one they gave out for. Because that's like if you're the number one test team in the nation, you have the long stick with a ball in the end, like a cricket ball. Is it the same? No, no, no. This one's a lot bigger. It's pretty fucking big, dude. They're like... Is it the same? Have you seen the photo of this? No, get the photo up and yeah, I'll... Yeah, I'll get the photo. I'll let you know. Because I've seen like... I've seen teams with this... With the thing that's in my head when you're the world when you're the number one team in the world, right? Okay, which it's it's pretty thug. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's fucking cool. If it's the one that I'm thinking, it's fucking cool as shit. Yeah, like can you see? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's oh, it. so it's been yeah. doing the rounds. Yeah, that's it's been doing you. the rounds. No, no, no. That's okay. just like if you're the number one test team in the world, you get that. Yeah, right. Um, oh, I like it. Yeah, it's fucking mad. And New Zealand, dude, fucking their whole country can fit inside Sydney. Like they can't populate those motherfuckers, mate. And that's their first ever international cricket trophy. They've never won a World Cup in 2020. That's either. crazy. And you know what? I'm happy for them. For well us, mm. like they fucking got absolutely robbed of the one day. They needed a World sixth Cup. day. Yeah. So th was that just because it pissed rain? Emergency yeah. day. Yeah. So is that they needed a result because you had to have a result? Yeah, so there's an emergency day. They almost didn't get one. They should have made it a timeless test. I heard that was getting thrown around. See, that that's been a pretty dope. Fun. I would Go I actually back to the old yeah. timeless. That would be pretty cool to make the final of the test championship a timeless test. What I would say though is 
let's never ever hold it the final in England ever again. No, no, no. Well, never I think again. They wanted to go back to the spiritual home yeah, of cricket. Fuck that, dude. No one's. Uh, why don't you play it at the fucking MCG? Get a hundred thousand in. People there. want a fucking test match. Well, not do MCG and have a road, but like, it's it just seems well, like I know what you mean, but, but it yeah, just seems I mean. crazy. Probably the SCG. SCG. Let's do the SCG. Um, timeless test SCG. No matter who's playing, it just seems like a fucking dumb place to play cricket that matters. Obviously, the Ashes, well, you have a, to do well, it every... Well, well, if you went there for a five-fucking-test series, sure, I get it. But it's a one-off test. It just rains in England all the time. Just It just rains all the time. And they don't seem to care enough to build anything with a fucking roof on it, so you are... Well, their grounds aren't nearly big enough. No, I know, exactly. But they're tiny, they're tiny. Grounds. Yeah, they're like... The biggest crowns like fucking 20,000. Yeah. Like, bro, like it's... What like, is that about? I don't know. I don't know. Get it together, ECB, you fucking losers. Like, mate, Lords is probably the size of Bell Reeve. We don't even fucking play test. No. Do you know Get it mean? together. Get it on. Like, what, show some respect to the game. Yeah, or is it just like, does, does no one care about cricket in England? I know football's they number do. one. They do. Like, cricket's pretty big. But is it just more the bourgeoisie, rich motherfuckers? I think, I think, I the think crowd it, didn't even look that big at the test championship. Like, I, think well, it's, like, I think it's more bougie, bougie. Yeah, Although yeah, yeah. the fucking Barmy Army seem pretty rogue to me. Well, they are rogue, but that's because bougie pricks can be rogue. That's true. They can be. Very. Very rogue. What, what are we saying? We're, what we're saying essentially is that all cricket that matters should be played in the SCG. Well, it can rain in Sydney ball. as well, but it certainly yeah, like, yeah, but not let's much. let's build some stadiums with roofs. Let's build some cricket grounds. It takes with away roofs. from it a bit. I don't like the. Roof. You only need the roof if it's raining. Yeah, but I like. But like, it needs to come all the way back. Yeah, yeah. but you of course let's do that. We the, can put the, people yeah, rovers on at, Mars. At Eddie had at Marvel Stadium, whatever it's called now. They play twenty twenty games there. Yeah, 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 yeah. and it comes all. But also, back. just make it timeless. You, you have to wait. only need the roof if it's raining. Yeah, not a problem. Um, problem fixed. Problem solved. Problem solved. Is there anything else that we need to cover off on as a podcast, as friends, as family, as, as lovers, people. as people, before we move on to everyone's favourite segment, the Dribbler Dribbles? Uh, Justice Honey not being in the Olympics. That's sad. That is sad. I feel bad for Justice. Gal said he was going to get him out of the Olympics and... He sort of did in a sense, but it was more just he allowed himself to get punched so much that Justice fucked all the ligaments in his hands. It's unfortunate. But I, I it's, But it's in a, the boxing world, the Olympics is like... No, but in like an athlete world, the Olympics is like a notch on the belt. But I mean, is the Olympics even going to go ahead? Who the fuck knows? Apparently, can you look this up, Dior? The Olympics is in a month's time. Yeah. Uh, and everyone in Japan's like, hey, no. One month. <laughs> um, when does the Olympics start? Friday, 23 of July. That's less than a month. There you go. There has been... Fuck all hype. Well, dude, because it's a COVID year and everyone's like, is it even going to happen? But where's the hype been? Where's the hype? Well, there's no hype because no one even knows if it's going to go ahead and everyone's yeah. kind of like, it's not really that important what time to is people. It? What time is it in Tokyo? I think you're like nine hours, hours ahead. Like, oh, two oh, hours. that's nice. No, I wait. I'll, that's nice. Oh, hang on, don't trust me. With well, don't trust me either. I have been to Japan, but I don't fucking... I've also been to that Japan. That was a long time ago. It's 8.52 a.m. Oh, they're an hour behind. Oh. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. Oh, wow. Oh, are they going to fucking run all the events on Yank time again? Surely not. You don't do that. Remember that? Place. In Rio, they had the fucking swimming finals at like one in the morning. No. For the Yanks. I didn't know I that. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Piss um, me off. What does this all mean for us, the punter and the dribbler? Who, well, knows? who knows? Dude, we've covered a few Olympics in our time, haven't we? Or have we just done Rio? You and I. Yeah. On the podcast? Yeah. Just one. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> So that's four years ago, Rio. Was that the last one? Five years. Five years, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just one, dude. We probably barely got Rio in. I think no, no, we definitely Rio got Rio early. No, no, we definitely got Rio. We, yeah, it was early. About? I don't remember what we were talking about. Do you remember when we were talking about in Rio uh, how all of the uh, American NBA players all stayed on yachts and shit off the oh, coast? Yeah. And yeah. the Australian, Australian NBA... Australian had to make their own yeah. fucking shower yeah. curtains. Yeah, Bogut had like a fucking trundle and then another trundle <laughs> at the end of his trundle <laughs> yeah. so he could be long enough in it. Yeah, yeah, two yeah, trundles. Bed and they were lit there's literally videos of them doing their own shower curtains. Shower curtains, curtains and shit. That, yeah. While like, you know... Kobe and shit. I don't know if Kobe was playing RIP, but like they were literally in like fucking Maggie yeah, off Kobe the coast. Wasn't, but like, fucking, you don't reckon Kobe was playing nah, nah, fucking four years ago? No, nah, nah, no, Him and LeBron and shit play early and they don't, so they don't play again. LeBron hasn't played for a couple of Olympics. Really? He, he didn't, I think he played in London maybe, but definitely not in Rio. Bron didn't play in Rio? No, nah, they like the summer off. They're like, that's fuck true. It, like, get, get a get one. Yeah. 
Fuck it. Yeah, no LeBron. No, who was the other one you said? Kobe. Kobe wouldn't Kobe yeah, wouldn't no, have played. Kobe, no way. No. Was Kevin Durant even there? Yeah, Kevin Durant. Was he was who there. was in the team? Uh, Jimmy Butler, Kevin Durant, DeAndre Jordan, Kyle Lowry, Harrison Barnes, DeMar DeRozan, Kyrie Irving, Clay Thompson, DeMarcus Cousins, Paul George. Like, no Steph Curry. Even, Draymond you know Green I mean? and Carmel. Steph? No. No Steph. They win one, they fuck So off. Steph would have won one already? Yeah. He would have won in London. So he would have been playing in London? Yeah, I reckon, yeah. Go to the London US basketball team. Yeah. That just seems like a long time ago for Steph. I think he was. I, I think he would have been playing. I could be wrong. Yeah, I feel like he wouldn't have been. I, he would have been at Rio then, for no, sure. I don't think so. Tyson Chandler has Kevin he won a Durant, gold medal? LeBron. Um, well, Steph wasn't in this 2012 team, so yeah. I don't think so. Interesting. Just doesn't give so a he's fuck. He's Narbrado. Yeah, Kobe and um, LeBron were in this team. Get okay. Steph up. Yeah, well, no, just go to go to the fucking Japan Olympics, or have they not picked that yet? Would they not have picked that team? Maybe. I'll see. Just go to Steph Curry's Wikipedia and yeah. see. Well, we can tell he hasn't fucking won one. He wasn't at Rio. Do you want me to search Olympics? Um, oh, he withdrew from consideration for Brazil because he was injured. Okay, there you go. Uh, so maybe he will go to Tokyo to get yeah. gold. Yeah. Look, go go, Steph Curry Tokyo Olympics. Well, just Yeah, but I would be interested just in who's in the Tokyo Olympics. anyway. How about Ben Simmons, bro? Oh God! Jesus Christ! Yeah. Now Holy he's throwing, he, fuck! He is he like mate? He's been getting lit up, bro. He's been getting torched, like absolutely fucking torched. And then when you look at like his shooting, you're like, well, I get it. He just he's, was like, he's terrified his to shoot the ball. Free throw percentage was the worst of of people that have taken more than seventy three free throws in a finals. His shooting percentage was the worst. He's ever. got the yips. Bad. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>